Hello, Ben. Hi, can you hear me? I hear you fine. How are you doing this morning? It's been a good morning. Cool. Are you about ready to get going? I am ready. Well, great. So, um, thank you so much for chatting to us today. Just to kind of get us started, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the book that you've uh, written um, and uh, when it's coming out. Yeah, I'm, I'm T.D. Barnes. Um, I'm the author of the uh, Sacred Genesis of Area 51 that's coming out on September the 4th. It's a, a book about, you know, why the CIA established Area 51 and basically what we did. The, the book covers, you know, why did the CIA get involved in uh, aircraft surveillance business in the first place, which means there's a lot of politics. Uh, and they needed to, they came up with the U-2 plane to uh, spy on Russia. And they needed a place to test it. And the CIA picked uh, Nevada for the uh, state to do it in. And that became Area 51. The book, it goes into the, the people that was involved in it. It's not just about the project. We needed a um, spy plane to spy on Russia. The um, Air Force was getting shot down repeatedly as they tried to see what the Russians were doing behind the Iron Curtain. And so the president gave the CIA the job of building a spy plane. And incidentally, it was um, a more highly classified project than was the atomic bomb, the Manhattan Project the atomic bomb. What was the space at its heyday? What did it? What was going on there? The CIA was needing a place that um, that they could spy the plane without anyone seeing it or um, even knowing that it existed. So they picked it's just it's just a dry lake bed uh, hidden. Of course, I worked out at Area 51, and uh, we kind of bonded together. The people worked out there, and it, we formed a um, kind of a secret organization of all the people that worked out there, and. Um, about 15 years ago, the CIA called me up and they um, said, we got a problem. Uh, we've lost all the records of what you guys did out there. So I was kind of given the job by the agency to um, contact my people and get their stories. And that's the reason the CIA started declassifying so much of what went on out there is so they could recover the history. I mean, I assume there was some kind of um, balancing act between, you know, having to dig up this history and also kind of be aware that there was sensitive information potentially, you know, uh, being discussed. So once we started that, the agency would start sending me documents that they needed an, an explanation on and I'd post them and then we'd get the stories from the participants in the program. So I amassed just thousands and thousands of pages of uh, information that no one else has. has. And uh, we decided, well, let's put this into a uh, book to carry on the legacy. So, uh, and, and incidentally, anything that I, I do publish, I have to get approval from the agency. Any of us authors, we, the last thing in the world we want to do is expose a secret. So I decided, you know, this what better way of keeping this uh, history alive than to uh, publish a book. Can you kind of paint a picture of of what a kind of day in the life looked like during that time. Who are some of the people you might have interacted with? You know, the place didn't exist. Uh, no one admitted it was there. Uh, the cover we used was that it was, NASA was testing a high altitude plane and working with Atomic Energy Commission. The CIA's name never came up at all. And, uh, and we're talking about the period from 1955 to 1979. No one ever heard of Area 51, and our wives or families had no, did not, did not have a clue where we was at or what we were doing. And this went on for years on end. So it, what it did is really bonded the people together where today, uh, every two years we have a reunion. Um, we know all the kids and the, their kids. They created a, a, a real close-knit family we were able to talk about a lot of these different elements before now. However, the CIA only this year declassified what it did out there. And, that, and that's what's new about this book. It sounds like there's, there's stuff that you still can't talk about, that there's stuff that's still classified? Uh, some of it's technology, but most of it is um, we might have uh, overflown a country that we will never admit to. I'll give you an example. This, the uh, North Korea seized the USS Pueblo in 1968. Well, we flew uh, 
five planes out of um, Air 51 over North, North Korea. And one of the missions, uh, we can't admit to it, but uh, uh, I'm just speculating we might have flown into China to see if they were, if they were up to anything. Some of those things we can't talk about. Are these your photographs that you personally took, or have you collected them over the years? The CIA itself did not take photographs. Uh, there's always someone that did the filming for the CIA did the, did the sign the uh, copyright to the agency. We decided at that point that uh, I would become the archivist of all the photographs. The agency gave me what they had, Lockheed gave me what they had, NASA gave me theirs, and ended up with 104,000 photographs. I started accumulating all these documents as we, uh, uh, when I started the website, stuff started coming in. I had a treasure trove of photographs about two years ago. We did a, we did a story about how we moved the um, spy planes from California to Area 51. But we came up with over 200 photographs that no one had ever seen before. And uh, now I've got just uh, thousands of pages of uh, declassified documents to, to refer to as I write the books. A lot of times the agency would see something that uh, I have something on the, that was introduced to the website. And they said, we got something you need to supplement that. And they would ship me a, uh, fax me a document or email it or whatever. And <laughs> I put it on the website and I'd have some publisher call me up and say, how in the world did you get that? I've, I've had a full request in that for that for 10 years. There's a, it seems like there's a lot of fiction about Area 51 too. You know, people speculate about what it was. You know, the speculation about Area 51, actually that's part of the legacy. The speculation. The, until the Air Force took over in 1979, no one ever heard of Area 51. So there was no stories, and that, and it's only after the Air Force took over, and, and again, that goes to the wisdom of the president when he said the CIA run it because they don't have leaks, and the Air Force leaks like a sieve because of the chain of command, because they rotate their people every two or three years, and that sort of thing. The CIA did not do that. Uh, the rumor got out that it, it existed, and then people started saying, and then they found out it had been there for 20, 30 years. And the speculation starts, what have they been doing all this time out there? But their imaginations run wild. And all of a sudden, the, the UFO people started trying to connect it of Area 51 to, uh, to the Roswell incident, which was um, Roswell happened in 1947. A lot of the stories that came out of Area 51 was, you might say, justified because we were, in later years, they made a technology laboratory out of it. They brought in a lot of uh, proof of concept to develop it, see if it fly, see if it would meet the stealth requirements that we had at the time. So we had some weird looking stuff flying out there. And some, of the, some people saw these things and they became flying saucers. Can, let's talk a little bit just briefly about your, your process of writing, just because, you know, I'm calling from a book publisher. It is uh, it's something I really, really enjoy. It's uh, more of a hobby, you might say. Um, my writing habits is I get up in the morning, I got a, a, a MacBook Air sitting by my easy chair, and and, um, and I, probably during the night I, I generate some thoughts, and I'll re- quickly um, enter those, and then I'll eventually make it into my office. And I'll spend almost the entire day um, just working at my office, uh, between people wanting photographs and stuff sent to them that I'm the archivist of, and mixing with the uh, aviation community. I'm sitting here writing all day long. My experiences with Arcadia has been great. I mean, the people who have, have been just perfect to work with. It's been, we've flown through the process. It's, it's been easy for me. They made it easy for me. And I think we're going to have some very good results.